Now, Rang 10, the Wolf and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spotlight series, where today we are having a look at the Another One NDR Rifle mod, which is being made by user Glorious Warrior. And what this, well, glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a new lore friendly weapon in the form of the NDR Rifle. And I have been having a lot of fun with this, especially considering it is a real world historic Cold War gun. And you guys know me, I always love those sorts of things. That being said though, I had never heard of this gun before, and so I had to look it up. Apparently it was developed in East Germany, and was kind of a weird mix between a G3 and a Sturmgewehr 44, and eventually was dropped in trials in favor of the AK-47, so it never saw use, but was built as prototype. So of course it's a rare gun, and is equally rare here in Fallout. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment though, so let's jump on over here and have a look at what we do get with the NDR, which in its most standard and basic form will do 35 damage with a 5.56 round with a firing rate of 80, range of 119, accuracy of 66, and a weight of 8.2. Not too bad there. And as you can see, this thing is gorgeous. I really do love the look of this thing, both the design of the gun, the modeling, the texturing, all very cool. And when I was reading about it being kind of a mix between a stream of Air 44 and a G3. Yeah, it really looks like that, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks like someone just blended the two together, and I think that's pretty darn cool. And as for being a gun in Fallout, it does thankfully have a pretty impressive list of modifications. Some of the categories are a bit lacking, but things like the sights, you've got a lot of good options in, and overall, it's just, you know, a fun gun with a lot of good things to it that I very much have been enjoying. Now, as for how you do get your hands on one of these lovely things, well, there's only one in the world, so I, of course, had to cheat all these in, and you'll find that one and only version of this gun over at Fort Hagen. Specifically on the rooftop, you'll find this in the arms of a long-dead soldier. And I think that makes all the sense in the world for this, because, I mean, again, IRL is a very, very rare gun, since it only ever did see trials. And so, yeah, only one of them being in the Commonwealth makes a lot of sense. Now, once you do have that one gun, gun. Of course, you can head on over to any weapon workbench and check out the different modifications we've got, starting with the receiver category, where we've got the pretty typical lineup of things from standard, hardened, calibrated, etc. And you've got most of these in either automatic or semi-automatic forms, which is pretty darn good. Now, next in the barrel category, we've got either the standard, short, or snub barrel. Each of these ones increasing the firing rate, but decreasing range. And then in the grip category, we've got either the standard wooden or a polymer grip, if you are liking a little bit more of a modernish feel. And then in the magazine category, we've got a 20, 30, 45, and 60 round magazine. Always good to see those, especially if you go with the automatic receivers. And in sights, we've got a lot of fun options of a lot of different sights. All, you know, pretty modern-ish things, but, you know, a lot of good options here if you're wanting this gun to, you know, have the sort of sighting you're liking. Nothing that's too high in zoom. I think the highest zoom is 2.5, so this is definitely more for, you know, being an assault rifle over, like, a mid-range mid sniper rifle, but still very nice indeed. I would I would have liked to see a few more longer-range scopes, though, but, oh well, the ones we do have are good. And the muzzle category, we've got a lot of different muzzle brakes and compensators, along with two different silencers down here at the bottom. And then we have the stock category, where we've either got the short, a steel, or wooden stock. I think I like the wooden one the most because it looks old school, and I like that. And finally, we do have a damage category if you do want to increase the damage a little bit more for this to make it a bit more useful into the later game. And you guys know me on this sort of thing. I wish there were some requirements so it didn't feel so cheaty. But hey, if you want to add more damage, add more damage. That's the fun of modding. Now, let's go grab ourselves some two modified versions I did make earlier and see how this thing does shoot. And again, 
fun gun to fire. I do like this thing. It's got just, you know, a good fire rate for it. Very controllable overall, as you can see. I mean, being a big hunk of steel and wood, it's, you know, doesn't got a whole lot of recoil to it, which I do very much enjoy. The gun also does come with some custom animations here for first and third person and also in power armor, which is always nice to see on these sorts of guns. And yeah, just overall a very fun weapon to fire. Now let's go over to our modified ones here, the Marksman one first with uh, one of the nice sights on there. And also, of course, automatic. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And look at how easy that was to control. Let's actually fire without trying to control just to show the recoil here. Look at how little recoil this thing has. <laughs> it is magnificent. I'm a person who is awful at aiming, especially with automatic weapons. And this thing keeps on target pretty darn well. I do very much like that. And, of course, finally, I've got my uh, suppressed version here, which is the highest amount of damage I could get this thing up without, of course, using any form of perks. We just have a bog standard character here, so if you do have perks, you can get it above that 86 points in damage that I did get. And, yeah, just a nice, nice gun. I do enjoy it. So let us get ourselves our usual Deathclaw friend and see how this thing works in practice. Oh boy, with my shooting. Let's see how well this goes. Usually poorly for me. Okay, hello Deathclaw. Don't really need the scope right now, don't, do I? Oh, oh no, you turned around. Oh, actually, this one's not going too bad. All right, all right, die Deathclaw. I'm actually shooting okay today. I say as I'm sure I'll probably just jinx myself. <laughs> You know what? Let's finish him off. Yeah, we'll just kill another with the automatic one. There we go. And, oh, no, stop moving on to the sides, my friend. There we are. We have killed a death clod. Actually, went far better than I thought. Especially considering some of the other recent gun mods I've looked at have done very poorly with the shooting. All right, so let's get out the automatic version, which is, uh, like with the semi-automatic version, the highest amount of damage I was able to get without any perks. And he's dead. <laughs> We didn't even go through all 60 rounds. Oh, I love this gun. It's just so much fun. I really do enjoy it. And you guys, again, like I said at the beginning, I always do love any of these sorts of historic weapons, especially Cold War era guns, as they are always just a lot of fun to look at and see that little bit of history. And I think they always fit in quite nicely with the world. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But hopefully you have enjoyed this one today and you do come back for the next episode where hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching as always. We'll have a good one.